This boy painted the light red. A passing train thought it had stopped at a red light. The boy took the opportunity to push his suitcase onto the train for a free ride. But before he could climb aboard, two security guards spotted him. The boy panicked and hid under the car. But before he could breathe a sigh of relief, the train started to move. He had no choice but to get out again. Luckily, there was a conveyor belt nearby and the boy was able to use it to board the train. It was the first time the boy had ever run away from home. His name was Spivey and although he was only 10 years old he was a genius. Not long before, he had invented a perpetual motion machine and won the prestigious Baird Prize. But when he told his father about the award, he didn't believe him and told him to watch less cartoons. He had no choice but to go to his mother. But his mom is an entomologist who spends all her time in the lab and doesn't care about him. So Spidey was distraught. He sneaks onto the train so he can collect his prize, so that his parents can pay more attention to him. But the train had only gone one stop. Spidey spotted a couple of security guards coming towards him. Apparently they'd been tipped off that someone had skipped the train. In desperation, Spidey had to hide in the caravan being towed. The guard heard the commotion and checked that the doors had been locked. He then peered through the window. He wondered how this poster could be so realistic. Even the snot is drawn on it. Just then, the train whistle sounded again. The security guard had to jump off the train first, and Spivey got away with it. It was still a long way to go. He simply slept in the car. When the train arrived at the next stop, it was late afternoon. Spivey woke up and saw a hot dog shop nearby. He felt a sudden hunger. His mother had never bought him a hot dog before saying it was junk food. Today he was finally left alone. He ordered himself a super double. But then two policemen came along. With a missing person notice in their hands about him, Spivey turned his head away. I can't be seen. I can't be seen. He said, but the police hadn't seen him. But the owner knew that the police were looking for the kid in front of him. But after all, the notice didn't say how much to pay. Might as well sell an extra hot dog. Back on the train. Spivey had a good meal, but after he'd finished feeding himself, and then came an endless feeling of loneliness, he started to miss home. He missed his mom and dad, and his brother, who had been killed by accident. He couldn't sleep that night. The next day the train arrived in Washington. Spivey felt unsteady with his heavy suitcase, so he found an electric box. He took only some of his belongings and hid the rest in the box. A police car came along and thought the boy was still damaging public property. They wanted to take him back to the police station. Spivey ran off at a run. The police chased after him. Him. The two of them came to a broken bridge. The gates were open just in time, stopping Spivey in his tracks. The policeman, panting and laughing, said, But Spivey jumped over and hung his hands on the railing. The policemen are in a hurry. The police are relieved to see Spivey's feet find their way to the railing. When the broken bridge came to a stop, he climbed up without difficulty, but his ribs were badly bruised by the dangerous maneuver. Spidey dragged his exhausted body. After gesticulating on the road, he finally stopped an Optimus. The kind driver saw how badly he was hurt and asked if he wanted to be taken to hospital. But Spidey refused. He just wanted to collect his prize and get home as soon as possible. After a long night's drive, the car finally arrived at Smith College. This was Spivey's destination. After bidding farewell to the kindly driver, Spivey went to the front desk of the college. He said he was here to collect his Baird Award. He asked for the dean of the college by name. But when she saw Spivey, she couldn't believe that the inventor of perpetual motion was a teenage boy. But Spivey said calmly, Hearing Spivey speak so expertly, the dean of women was convinced. She took Spivey to have his brain tested. The test was even higher than hers. The award ceremony was attended by some of the biggest names in academia. Spivey had come all this way with a purpose. When he got on the podium to speak, he said he had three things to say. Firstly, he wanted to thank everyone for not canceling the award because of his young age. Secondly, his perpetual motion machine is based on the principle of the electromagnetic wheel. And when the magnetism wears off in 400 years, the machine will stop working. So there is still a long way to go before mankind can create a true perpetual motion machine. Having said these two things, Spidey hesitated for a long time before speaking again. No one in the audience could figure out why this was being brought up at the award ceremony. But that's what Spivey is really here for. He wanted to say his biggest grievance in the best possible moment. He said he'd been a researcher since he was a kid. His brother, however, was only interested in guns. He had the idea of creating a sonogram of gunfire so that he could play with his brother. But in the process, the shotgun suddenly blew up and his brother was killed. His parents didn't care about the incident. 
and he was responsible for his brother's death. The reason he's taking this opportunity to tell them today is that he hopes they'll know the truth and understand him. Spivey's sincerity touched everyone in the audience. That day he was on a quiz show. When the host asked him if it was hard for you to have killed your brother, Spivey didn't know what to say. Just then his mother came out from backstage. This was completely unexpected for Spivey. Seeing that her mother had traveled thousands of kilometers to get here, she sheepishly apologized to her mother. Whatever the reason, it was wrong for him to run away from home. But she didn't blame him. Instead, she said, is it right to give a child a gun as a toy? Is it right to let a child shoot and play alone? His mother told Spidey that it wasn't his fault or anyone's fault, that it was an accident. Spidey realized that it wasn't that his parents didn't love him. It was that they too were living with a deep sense of remorse. They blamed themselves for not protecting their child and not giving him enough love. It was more painful for the parents than the guilt they felt. With all this in mind, Spidey asked his mother to take him home. He didn't want to stay here any longer, but the host came out after them and stopped them, saying they couldn't leave while the show was still on. Then his father appeared out of nowhere and punched him in the face. Then he knelt down and motioned for his son to climb onto his shoulders. This was the moment when the barrier between the family disappeared. There is often a lack of communication between parents and children. Parents think that even if they talk to their children, they don't understand many things, so it's better not to talk about them. And the child feels that even if he or she talks, the parents may not listen. As time goes by, a generation gap is created. In fact, as long as both parties are willing to listen carefully, love each other is actually very simple. Do well to watch it if you find it interesting. Highly recommended. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this on Recap Next.